I have already made two videos about pressure. Rarely do I ever make two videos about the same topic. The only time I've ever done this was when I made two videos about fighting. But even then, the second one was tackling a much larger topic while using fighting as an example. However, never have I ever made three videos about one game. That is, until now. I mean, you read the title of the video, so hopefully that isn't a surprise, but yeah. Pressure fascinates me. I really don't know what it is about this game that has me so curious about how it was made. I mean, it's probably because of Gianni. Yeah, actually it's, it's, yeah, it's because of Gianni. But regardless, I was still curious about how a game like Pressure is made. So I decided to do yet another developer interview, this time sitting down with three of the developers for Pressure to get some insight on how it was made. I am the lead developer, main modeler, and the one who writes the paychecks. Well, I'm Zerum. I'm pretty much just known to be Sebastian's creator. He's kind of just managed between me and Zeal. I would also say that um, I help with writing as well. I'm Obo. I am the professional ideas guy around here, and I'm also a character writer. Now, I want to format this video differently from my previous developer interview. Not only is pressure extremely complex, but while editing down the interview itself, I discovered something very interesting. The main crux of this video is this. Every single mechanic and pressure that I thought was so cool and believed took days of agonizing over analyzing and prep, mechanics that I thought were absolute peak modern Roblox weren't overthought. In fact, some of them were thrown together at the very last minute. Now, what would cause a developer to just decide to add a giant robot into their game? What would cause a developer to say, no, you know what? We should make our shopkeeper the actual shop itself. Well, it's actually a lot more simple than I thought. And I'm honestly a little mad that I never thought about this concept in depth before. Zeal added all of these things into pressure simply because... This was cool. Wouldn't it be cool? It'd be kind of cool, kind of cool. I thought it'd just be cool. Oh, that'd be cool. It's really cool. He thought it would be cool. It's such a stupidly simple statement, but over the years, I found firsthand that sometimes the most simple of ideas are the ones that end up becoming the best pieces of content. My original pressure video, which now has over 1 million views, thank you for that by the way, was completely born out of the shock and awe I experienced upon playing this game for the first time. I wanted to make that video because I thought pressure was cool. And during this very interview, nearly every time I brought up a mechanic of pressure that I overanalyzed in some previous video, Zeal or Hobo or Zerum responded with, I thought it would be cool. For example, the ending of the game, where Lucy, the giant trench bleeder robot, crushes a searchlight saving the player's life, colloquially known as the stomp. Here I was thinking that the stomp was this incredibly well thought out, overanalyzed and picked apart moment that took weeks of prep, trying to make sure that it was all as dramatic as possible. A moment that I deem the best in the entire game by far. Turns out, I wanted a big cool robot. I never thought about that. I just want a big cool robot. Why? Well, let's all say it together. He, he thought, thought it would, it would be, cool. be cool. And the document system, which I and many others consider to be a really great vessel for storytelling, was done simply because it's sort of like a, like a cool like substitute for like a progression system for the game. Even the concept of Sebastian himself being the shop and having all of the purchasable items on his body was done simply because Zeal thought it would be cool. Hey, wouldn't it be cool if the items were like on his body instead? You know what else would be cool? You being subscribed to this channel channel. We are only 19,000 subscribers away from that sweet 100k mark. And if that happens, I can finally get into the Roblox star program. It's been a long time goal of mine. And if you're one of the 200 something thousand lurkers in my community, just subscribe already. It's completely free. And I promise that you'll enjoy the next videos that I've got cooking up. Anyway, Back to the video. This ideology of I thought it would be cool extends to outside source material too. The entity known as Frogger in the game, you know, the variant of the angler that runs it back a couple of times just to waste yours. Well, that design is straight up the monster from Iron Lung, a game that is directly listed in Pressure's description. Why did Zeal do this? Well, and I thought, hmm, it would be kind of cool to have the official design. So I reached out to David Siminski and I asked, hey, hmm. could, we, could we use the Iron Lung fish design? And he goes like, yeah, sure if you credit, and then we credit him, and oh, that's, that's why right. the frog is in the game. This ideology is so powerful that it even caused Zeal to spend money, completely unheard of by the way, on banger music, because he thought randomized music at the start of every run would be cool. We only made music for stuff that needed music, until I realized that um, 
hey, randomized music is kind of cool. And then we spend a bit more on the music. I think what's so interesting about this game is how little the lead dev cares about servicing the community. It reminds me of what Soda Kettle said at the end of our interview. You're ultimately making a character that you like. Don't worry about what other people want. Fan bases and audiences naturally form around media. A team slash creator is truly passionate in, which is basically what ended up happening in the fighting. And I think that sentiment is reflected perfectly in Pressure. Zeal didn't include a character like Sebastian because he wanted more fan art of his game, but simply because he thought it would be cool. I don't have the community in mind when designing new stuff. I'm more so thinking, how is this going to look in game? Is this going to look cool? And Zerum didn't choose the main features of Sebastian's design because she thought fans would go crazy for it, but because she simply thought it was a good design. Originally, Zeal wanted to give Sebastian Sebastian a gas mask and when I saw that like the alarms were like blaring in my head I was like this looks cluttered I, I literally yeah. despised it with my entire being when we were like coming up with Sebastian I really wanted his like smile to be visible so having it be covered just like completely took that away and I really didn't like that from the beginning I always wanted him to have his little ear fins and Zeal was like that looks stupid and I'm like are you kidding me <laughs> and I feel like it's such a like big piece of like his character so it got me wondering what about this process is so powerful how does I thought it would be cool translate into banger content well I think the answer to that is pretty straightforward Forward. Imagine this scenario. You are John Game Dev, and you've been working on your game Bob's Wacky Underground Adventure or something. You've been working day in and day out trying to make this game as good as it can possibly be, but there's a problem. Nothing you seem to add is cool enough. No matter how in-depth the concept or mechanic is, the game just isn't cool. So you decide to scrap whatever ideas you had before and work on something that you deemed was cool enough. Well, what's cool enough? It's a question that nobody can really answer, as one man's cool is another man's cringe. However, I believe that if John Game Dev, the man who knows literally everything about Bob's wacky underground adventure or whatever, believes that something is cool, then that thing will be exponentially more cool to all of the people who play his game. Zeal thought that adding a massive robot that saves the player at the end of pressure would be cool, but for a casual player like me, it's so much much more than just cool. In fact, it's probably the coolest moment in any Roblox game I've ever experienced this far. And to Zeal, this might sound like an overreaction. And judging by how nonchalant his explanation of I wanted a cool robot is, tells me that this is 100% the case. The concept of what is cool is different not just per person, but per level of experience. I look at something like the Stomp as an incredible achievement in Roblox game design, but Zeal simply thought it would be cool. I don't understand why that's like that's like a big thing for people because it's just taking an animation and scaling it up. Now, we're not done quite yet because there's another layer of this adjacent to I thought it would be cool, and that is a dark, evil, twisted version of I thought it would be cool, known as I thought it would be funny. Now, while I thought it would be cool comes across as a very honest and passionate statement, I thought it would be funny seems much more sinister in nature. Sebastian isn't really a good guy. He kills the player if he gets too annoyed and isn't exactly the most caring when you die in game. Why is he like this? I don't like friendly characters. So we made him an asshole because I thought that was funny. And why does Gianni Matragrano of all people voice him? Well, because it would be funny, of course. You know what would be funny? Let's ask Gianni to voice him. And I sent him an email and and uh, in the email, I actually, uh, I misspelled the, uh, the f***ing email. So like I, I was reading that and ooh, I f***ed that up. And I was like, oh man, he's not going to accept that because he thinks we're stupid. Yeah, that's right. Zeal asked Gianni to voice Sebastian as a bit. Now, obviously this statement is a lot less impactful than the previous one, but it's still important to realize that the reason so many people love this game was done as a bit. There wasn't any careful thought put into who would voice Sebastian. It was just done because Zeal thought it would be funny. So what can we learn from all of this? Well, as someone who considers himself to be decently creative, I can confirm that a lot of my best videos were made because I thought the source material was cool. All of the little stupid bits and jokes that I throw into my videos were all done because I thought it would be funny. You really can't force creativity, and those who try end up making something that only seems creative on the surface, but ends up being a carbon copy of something else, and I don't believe pressure is that. 
Seal says something at the end of this interview that I think now after discovering the power of I thought it would be cool holds a lot more weight than what most people would give it credit for. This is remind me of a defunct land video. He talks about the American Idol thingy and every piece of advice that all the Idol winners would give is to just have fun with it. And, you know, I'm just going to say the th same thing because honestly, if you're not having fun, why bother making it? I think this is extremely important when doing something creative. If you're not having fun with it, why bother? But not even just that. If you're stressed and upset and putting a lot of p uh, weight on the stuff that you're creating, it's a hell of a lot harder to be creative. Putting weight on yourself to make something that other people would like causes you to make stuff that you yourself don't like. And that really sucks. So I hope that you have a much broader view of what it means to be creative. And thank you so much to Zeal, Zerum, and Hobo for your time with this interview. Time, I'm gonna forget Dude. about Dude. the small things! Dude, no, listen, <laughs> to, listen to me right now! Thanks for joining us for our... Uh... Daily the hell did I join of, into? Uh, the hell did I join into? No, this, is just, this, is, this is just me and Zeal's average interaction. Man, this development team is like, I'm about to divorce. <laughs> what? No, we're not. Like, I like how he pings me. It's like, dude, I'm just like here. <laughs> I'm, I'm the, I'm the watcher. Stop. Tell her just wow, stop. You're, trying to get the, you're trying to get this guy to like, you, you, he can't save you, brother. Class, can't save please you. stop fighting, okay? That's the wrong game. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. But what was the thing you wanted to do again? Because I forgot. Oh <laughs> my. You know what? I'm done. You know, everyone, 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 have a great day. everyone have a great day. Thanks for the interview. I'm done. What I'm is done. It? Thank you, Zero. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. <laughs> so you're aliens are coming. You've been right? compromised. Yeah, that was just for a bit. But, you know, if he accepts, he accepts. Uh, I, I was thinking it'd be funnier if, like, Pyrocynical was every single guard just, like, in. Oh no. <laughs> no captain. <laughs> captain. 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 Why are they all voiced by me? We've been compromised. I want him. <laughs> I want him to voice this doctor. The, the guards, I mean. Can we add Pyrocynical to the call? He, he didn't respond back to me. Aw. It's because it, the <gasps> dono was. What are you people there. still doing in here? <laughs> so thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.